Welcome into the latest ESPN headline. I'm Prim Saripapat. Former first round pick Jimmer Fredette has not lived up to his expectations. And right now, the Sacramento Kings and Fredette are working on a buyout, which would make the third year guard a free agent. For more on this story, we bring in NBA writer for ESPN.com, Brian Winhorse. So, Brian, what's the latest on this story? Well, Jimmer and the, the Kings have been in a slow breakup for months now. They've, they've tried to trade him at several times in the past and have been unable to do so. And so I think it's best for all parties. Jimmer was going to leave in free agency at the end of the season. The Kings did not want to bring him back. They've been trying to get rid of him. So this is an opportunity for, really an opportunity for Jimmer to try to find a team where he can showcase himself for the rest of the season and potentially make himself more attractive when he becomes a free agent uh, this summer. Now, talking about Fredette, he's averaging nearly six points, one and a half assists, and one rebound per game so far this season. Obviously, they're not gaudy stats, Brian, but the cast around him for some time has not been great. During his tenure, the Kings have had three different coaches. So how much of his lack of performance is to blame the Kings, or how much of it is him? Well, the one stat I think that is gaudy is his three-point shooting percentage. He's been consistently one of the best shooters in the league from long range this year. And so um, you're right. When he came to the, to the Kings, he was a top-10 pick. A lot was expected of him. He's had coaching changes, an ownership change, a general manager change. The entire seas around him has shifted. But he's still an elite-level shooter. He appears like he's not going to be an elite-level player. But because he can shoot, there are going to be teams that want to have him. And earlier this season, he had a game where he had 24 points against the New York Knicks. And I'm sure the Knicks uh, fans would love to see him uh, in New York after watching him in that performance. So he's going to have suitors, especially because he's going to be able to shoot. And the advantage for him is whatever his next opportunity will be, he will not have the baggage of having been a high lottery pick who's expected to come in and be a star player. He can come in with a fresh start and only have small expectations. And then when all he is is a really good three-point shooter, then I think he has a chance to be successful. And I really do think he'll have a career because of that shooting ability. So where would be a good fit for him? Well, you know, it depends on whether he wants to play for a team that's contending for the playoffs or he wants to play for a team that he, where he would get a lot of minutes to potentially improve his value. If he's interested in playing on a playoff team, the Memphis Grizzlies have been on the lookout for shooting for years now. And he would fit in nicely there. They have roster spots and room under the salary cap where they could sign him and bring him in. If he wants to go somewhere and get a lot of attention and a lot of minutes and potentially um, set himself up better, I do think the New York Knicks would be interesting. That They've just um, uh, you know, released two players. They have two roster spots, and they have a point guard situation with Raymond Felton potentially being out for a while as he deals with the legal issue. So um, that might be an interesting place, uh, although that would be under bright light, uh, where he could uh, potentially showcase his skills a little bit. Very interesting stuff. Brian Windhorst, thanks a lot for your time today. Thank you. We'll keep you updated with the story. Keep it logged on to ESPN.com. I'm Prim Saripapat with your latest ESPN headline.